Hi friends, welcome to my channel. Today we have more information on the Conjuring House drama. Now I actually haven't seen anyone make a video on this. I'm the first to do it, so subscribe to me right now or else. Um, not only do I give you the drama as soon as it happens, I'm also researching very thoroughly into it, okay? If you want all the tea, come to me. But we're on the Boston Globe site and we've got Conjuring House Haunted by Controversy Threats resignations and allegations from the beyond. This was posted or updated on September 18th. It is now the 22nd. So the Boston Globe is an American newspaper and for those who know, Jacqueline Nunez lives in Boston. I'm pretty sure it's on her LinkedIn. Um, but she owns, uh, actually let me pull it up. She owns Wonder Group LLC. So that's a real estate development. So it's in the area. I just thought I'd share that. But in this article here, Right, we've got new information from Jacqueline Nunez, Jason Hawes, and Brian Dancero. And they actually have been in contact with the Boston Globe, like, directly. And it's actual new stuff from them. So I'm excited to read that and show that to you guys. But let's get into it. So a former employee at the haunted Rhode Island farmhouse says he was fired by the owner who alleged that a ghost accused the employee of stealing money from the business. We all know that. That's Brian Dancero. This is the Conjuring House. This is a cool photo. So so Providence, I'm assuming that's from the Providence Journal newspaper article we read the other day. If you haven't seen it, it's up here. But it says, the cameras and microphones throughout the 18th century cabin known around the world as the Conjuring House cover practically every corner of this historical and supposedly haunted New England farmhouse in Burrowville. Their purpose, to capture on video anything mysterious, be it a ghost or a thief. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, well, where's the evidence for Brian stealing the money? So when Jacqueline Nunez, who owns the spooky attraction, attraction made famous by the horror movie franchise, which is one of my favourites, okay? I love the Conjuring universe, alright? Big fan. Suggested to employee Brian Dancero that someone was stealing money from the gift shop. Dancero suggested she check the tapes to find out who pocketed some $3,000 in cash. Now, whether the $3,000 was actually stolen or not, I'm unsure. Because obviously he didn't steal the money, but is there actual evidence that she is at a loss of three thousand dollars or is it all made up that's where i'm confused now i've just come to that realization i don't know man jacqueline likes to lie and just be all over the shop so i'm going to assume no money was stolen only after dance row pressed her to explain who she thought was stealing from the business did she finally offer up a name he said that's when she actually said to me you are, Dancero told the Globe, recounting an allegation he strongly denies. She said, John Arnold told me you've been stealing and I want you to pay my money back and I want you to leave, Dancero said. Okay, <laughs> that's fun. She straight up just didn't give him a chance, which... I mean, that's pretty messed up. Let's see what else is in here. Arnold is a previous owner of the home. He's been dead since 1839. So, yeah. How does that happen? <laughs> What the hell? Jason Hawes, the Rhode Island-based star of Sci-Fi's Ghost Hunters television show, has also accused Nunez of harassing him. Yeah, that's a whole thing too. It's, it's crazy how far it's gotten and escalated. In an email statement to The Globe, which was also shared with other local media outlets, Nunez, who also owns the Boston-based real estate development firm Wonder Group LLC, said she is a medium and a channel, and has been informed of other matters that are untoward from previous staff and even mischievous guests. I don't know what that means. I'm so lost. Does that sentence make sense to you? Sometimes I'm just dumb, okay? Let's just keep reading. It does not matter whether you believe in the paranormal or not, Nunes said in the statement. I and every person is entitled to experiences that bring understanding and meaning to our lives, including being informed or warned about wicked actors and actions. I'm not sure what is meant by this, Obviously actions, yeah, but actors, like, I don't know who she's referring to there. Like, maybe people just lying, like, oh, they're acting. They're like, oh, that didn't happen. Or Cody and Satori. At the end of the day, I'm pretty sure Jacqueline said that, yeah, Cody and Satori are real and has never thrown shade at them. But if she has, prove me wrong in the comments because I need to cover that obviously but as far as I'm aware they're fine. Okay so after Corey and Jennifer Hines and two paranormal investigators from Maine, oh there's no shot there from Maine bro. As I said in my last video, Maine's where Stephen King bases all his books and stuff. 
It's horror central. Uh, purchased the property in 2019. They opened the house to the public the following year. Nunes bought the place from them in 2022. Looking back, uh, if you guys remember, Corey Heinzen, so previous owner of the house, has been getting threats from Nunes lately. Like, you know the whole PayPal situation? Yeah, he got sent money from Jacqueline and her saying like, oh, you've got blood on your hands and stuff. Like, what do you mean, bro? Why is he involved? All of a sudden, spirits communicate with us here, Nunez wrote in a text message to Dancero. Soon after, he was let go in July because of the alleged theft. Arnold, she added, has told me many things since I bought the property and the business in May of 2022. Don't expletive. Oh, did I say that word right? I'm assuming that says don't F with me or I'll F with you. You are a liar, Brian. Oh, she's so aggressive. You're right. She's just dropping the F-bomb everywhere. The text is included in a lawsuit Brian Dance Row filed against Nunez in Rhode Island Superior Court in August. Oh my god, okay, so it's been sort of just over a month, maybe, since this has happened. Alleging Nunez owes him $9,000 in unpaid wages. Dance Row also alleges Nunez repeatedly defaming him and threatening him, leaving him fearing for his safety. Yeah, that man is so scared, bro. He's got a sensor at the front of his driveway at his house just to make sure that she doesn't show up. And if she does, the sensor is going to go off and alert him that someone's there, which is so sad. Like, mm. Dancero 61 suffered a heart attack in 2021 and the ordeal this summer has exacerbated some of his medical conditions, he said. He was never registered as a full-time employee, he said, and has been relying on donations from a GoFundMe to make ends meet since he lost his job at The Conjuring House. I actually want to see how he's doing with his GoFundMe, actually. Oh, $8,000 raised in USD. That's a lot in Australian. Holy... That's 11000 almost $12,000 Australian, which is a lot of money. He's doing well. Um, also, the funny thing about this is the Lizzie Borden house donated $501 to him. I mean, good on them. Like, that's wholesome, but far out. Anyway, I'm going to leave this link in the description down below if you want to donate. Go help Brian out. Um, I'm not sure what his situation is currently. Obviously, he's still probably going fighting this lawsuit. Uh, maybe he still doesn't have a job. It's just been a horrific experience for me psychologically, emotionally, and physically through this whole thing, he said. I feel so bad for him and everyone else, but here's the Annabelle doll. Oh, this is the fake Annabelle doll. If you guys watch the boys, Molly held this doll and scared everyone. Nunez disputes owing Dancero money and has accused him of slandering me personally and trying to damage my reputation and business. She said she would take legal action. Oh my god. She always threatens everyone with legal action. Like, all her information and uh, evidence that people have been doing wrong to her is just it's not gonna hold up in court okay she just always threatens people harasses people drops the f-bomb goes on random rants uh none of what she has done and said is gonna put her in the right of all of this so good threat there Jacqueline but it's not gonna work I mean I'm glad you know he's been trying to damage her reputation and business because people shouldn't go to the conjuring house right now boycott it okay thank you but at the end of the day i think brian and especially jason just want her to get help and for her to get better which is so wholesome but she's just a fucking a-hole <laughs> all right tessero is not the only former employee who has spoken out about working at the conjuring house which is also known as the old arnold estate in june seven former employees and people with ties to the property released a statement on social media declaring that they no longer affiliated with the house citing their experiences within that work environment mm, so I'm pretty sure that would have been Codin Satori and a few other people that haven't really got a spotlight in the situation because I don't think they're like big people online. I suppose Brian isn't but Brian was like the vice president of the house so of course he's going to speak out and he's the main man of the situation really unfortunately for him because uh <clears throat> he stole three thousand dollars guys totally happened. Meanwhile, Halls told West Greenwich Police on August 6th that Nunes had accused him of being aware of an alleged attempt on her life, according to a police report. That's when he pulled up in the pickup truck and apparently tried to assassinate her at like three o'clock in the morning or whatever it was. But it was just people leaving because Jacqueline hid in a room and didn't come out. That's so dumb, bro. <laughs> like, what? I don't have a relationship with her, Halls told The Globe. 
I've met her, I think, a total of four times, and each time there's been numerous people around. She wanted to meet me, and so forth. So yeah, he only went to the Conjuring House to do plumbing jobs. He never worked there as a staff member. They've had, like, a bit of yapping, and then that's it. So I don't know why he's at fault for a lot of things, and being accused of such crazy shit. Because, I don't know, man. He shouldn't even be involved. I know Satori worked there, okay? And obviously Satori's his daughter, but come on, bro. Just leave him alone. According to Hawes, Nunes posted on social media surveillance footage of a pickup truck leaving the Conjuring house early one morning and wrote that the man in the video looked like Jason Hawes. Now, even if anyone was to look at this footage, you could not see inside the truck and see who was driving in there or even see her face, okay? It was just a window... And, uh, yeah, I don't know how she got that information. So, I don't even think you can come and go on the Conjuring House property, you know? Like, there's an alarm and then there's a gate and stuff, so I don't know how she got that in her head, bro. Hawes told police that the man in the video was a visitor at the home, which offers customers overnight stays, and that he had reached out to Hawes to explain what happened. A commentator on the post also claimed he was the person in the video, not Hawes. There we go, see? Proof right there. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, Jason, you're trying to kill me. Um, actually, I was the one driving the pickup truck, and you're insane. Like, Still, Nunes texted Hawes, alleging he knew of the assassination attempt on me, according to a text message Hawes shared with the Globe. So, what, she still reckons she was trying to get killed by the person doing the overnight at the Conjuring House? Is that what she's saying? God, dude, what even? What even? Okay. Hawes requested police grant him a no trespass order for his home after Nunes sent him other texts accusing him of abuse, sexual abuse, rape, he said. What? Okay, we have not seen this yet. What? Against who? Against her? Are you... Hold the phone. I'm confused. I'm actually flabbergasted right now. Can you guys just, like, sit here with me and just, like, tell me what the fuck? What? What? Wait... I don't even know, bro. I have no idea. That, you just dropped the bomb right there on me and I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say, bro. We're just going to keep reading. I have no idea what that correlates to, if that's to her or she's just saying, yeah, you did this straight up. Not to me, but I just know you did it. Uh, doesn't bro have a wife and kids? Yes. Yes. Oh my god. On Facebook, Horse has advised that his 758,000 followers to boycott the Conjuring House. Very good. Yes, we shall do that. I'm concerned about the safety of any individual who might go to that property and spend any time there, he told the Globe. Me too, bro. Alright, you've got the ticks in the grass that doesn't get cut, which gives you Lyme disease. And then you've got Jacqueline, who's a nutcase. So... It's just not a good combination. Uh, Horse's daughter Satori and her fiancé Kobe Desbeans both worked as caretakers at the Conjuring House and appear on Ghost Hunters as the paranormal couple. They had planned to bring their haunted museum a collection of hundreds of donated items that they said hold some sort of energy or paranormal activity to a renovated barn on the Berryville property. But before they could move the bulk of the items, the 2,000 square foot bomb went up in flames in December 2023, an incident that the state fire marshal's office deemed as an accidental fire caused by the spontaneous ignition of oil-soaked rags discarded in a plastic bag within the structure, according to an official report filed in February. So, essentially, Jacqueline said that uh, one of the staff purposely set the barn up on fire, right? But what actually happened is... No, that's not what happened. I'm trying to remember because it was quite long ago. She said one of the staff members hired some painter right, who was very, like, didn't know how to do his job, apparently. You know, the rags got left there, the oil-soaked rags, and they spontaneously combusted, because that's what happens. They just set a light, which is crazy, but I can't remember. Read correct me in the comments what exactly happened, but I'm pretty sure... That's the story of it. Anyway, no injuries were reported, but Satori Hawes and Des Beans said they lost approximately $7,400 worth of sound equipment, curtains, furniture, and other items in the blaze. Like, look at the state of the barn, bro. How much money did it cost to fix the barn? I'm pretty sure it was $400,000. I don't exactly understand, but the people in the comments were telling me, like, yeah, timber and wood nowadays, very expensive. So, but I still can't justify that. $400,000 USD? is a lot of money. I don't know, man.
I don't know. That's very upsetting for them. At least they didn't have all their like haunted items in there that would have got set ablaze. Nunez initially told them that she would reimburse them for their losses, Satori Horse said, but so far has not, so they're also chasing a lot of money from Nunez. When reached out by the Globe, Nunez in a text message accused a Globe reporter of unethical and illegal behaviour and accused him of working for the mayor of Boston. What? What is going on, bro? There's so much stuff in this article that I'm flabbergasted by. So she told someone who works at the Globe, a reporter, that apparently he's working for the mayor of Boston. Proceed at your peril, she wrote. What What do you mean, working for the mayor? What, what would that entail? What would that do? I actually can't do this. Bro, okay. Nunes told the Providence Journal that she was twice committed to psychiatric wards, including as recently as early September. She claimed the matter was orchestrated by former employees in an attempt to take control of the house. Which, no, people are just trying to help you, bro, and you obviously need help, and you are kind of getting it, but it's not exactly working. As far as we're aware, okay, because the PayPal incident wasn't that long ago. They're just trying to get her to have help, okay? They're not trying to get the conjuring house. Jason said flat out he doesn't want to even be associated with it, really. Nunez could not immediately be reached for comment. Satori Hawes said Nunez sometimes claimed the spirits were telling her things in her head about the employees. Untrue statements that scared them. She stopped working at the home earlier this year. Can we get more information on that? That would be interesting. Oh my god. Spirits were telling her things in her head about the employees on true statements that scared them. Hmm. Okay, well that's interesting. Would you label that as schizophrenia or... I don't know. Mentally insane, maybe. Ugh. In the beginning, Nunez was really our friend, and we felt like we had a relationship with her, and then it turned and we felt like we were being used by her, Satori Hawes said. So I'd like to think that that relationship we had in the beginning was real, and I just... I still care about her. Oh, man, that's so bittersweet, bro. God, because, like, you would have experienced Jacqueline at, like, her best, right? Well, at her mentally stable self, and you would have just had that relationship. And now that it's completely flipped, and you're seeing this other side of her that you never expected, it's like, well, I knew you as a normal person. I'm going to say normal because, obviously... She's mentally ill, which is unfortunate. But it's like, yeah, maybe she can turn back and, like, she was lovely. And I just wish that she could come back to the person I once knew. But, God, okay, well, the main takeaways from this entire article, okay, we're, we're not going to forget about this part, okay? Nunes sent Jason texts accusing him of this, right? Don't know what that's about. The next one is her saying that the Globe reporter was working for the mayor of Boston. Don't know what that entails. And then the spirits were telling her things in her head uh, that made the staff scared of her. There's so much left to uncover. I just want to pull the blanket back and just find out everything. But obviously, again, there's no update about Brian Dance Rose court lawsuit, whatever. So we're just going to have to wait on that. Uh, it's been like a month of that happening. So I'm not sure where it's gotten, but I'm sure everything will go hopefully great with that. The main thing is Jacqueline really needs help. She needs to go to uh, more mental institutions so she can get help. She went to like this hospital and apparently that hospital has really bad reviews. Uh, it's the Fatima Hospital. She went to Our Lady of Fatima Hospital which 3.9 stars. I don't know. Someone said to me that it's a pretty bad hospital. No, no, no. Whoa! Oh my god, that has that looks haunted, bro. Hang on. God damn. That's scary, man. Yeah, but I don't know. She really just needs to go somewhere that's actually going to get her help because people just keep re-releasing her out to the public and obviously it hasn't helped and she's not getting proper help as far as I'm aware. I hope she does get better. Anywho, that's the new update. Please let me know what you think in the comments and help me figure out what the fuck is going on because <laughs> I have so many questions, literally. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and turn on post notifications to get more updates about the Conjuring House drama when it happens. But check out my other videos. I have a whole playlist on the drama if you guys aren't caught up. Also, follow me on my social media. It's down below in the description. But other than that, I hope to see you guys in the next video. This this was a crazy video um, and I'm just flabbergasted. I have no words. Okay, so I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.